Hey guys, Michael here. Now that the unboxing of the P2 is out of the way, I want to give you a tour around the physical properties of this P2. Just kind of give you some zoom in shots and let you take a look at it. Before I do that though, I'm going to share with you what the blades look like on the base as well as some hold downs that I got. Now, keep in mind, as I'm talking about this P2, this is a pre-production model. There may be some slight differences between my version and what you're gonna get in production when you get uh, one that's actually purchased after the beta testing had finished. Now, when it comes to the blade, at the bottom of the P2, this is what the blade looks like. It is a, has a non-stick coating on here. It has a pointed top and a flat bottom. And yeah, it's really easy to clean. You can use vinegar or isopropyl alcohol when it comes to getting the oils and uh, sap from wood. As you're cutting wood, it's gonna get on there. It's gonna get sticky, it's gonna get messy. You can clean that off with vinegar or isopropyl alcohol. Also included in my P2 were four of these little guys. And at first I didn't know what it was, <laughs> but yeah, so this is a hold down. The way it works is this is flat on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see this in this video, but that has a little, little catch right there at the bottom. That actually fits this just like that. So what you're going to do is with this inside the P2, you're going to take this, hook it on there and you can pull up on this part right here. And you, when you pull up on that, you can put the material inside. Now, as far as how big a material you can put in here, the way this one works, it does open up quite a bit. It's just a little weird to get to, but I believe it's about 12 millimeters of what you can actually connect or underneath that uh, hole down there. So it's a pretty good gap. So if you have thinner three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter boards that actually are warped and you want them to be flat, you can use these. And again, my P2 came with four of these. Also included in the kit was this dual tip screwdriver. It comes with a Phillips head one side, Allen wrench on the other side. This screwdriver is used for a lot of the uh, prep work when you're getting your machine ready. It'll allow you to take apart the little screw holds in the tray at the bottom, uh, take off the back, and I'll show you what all that looks like here in a second. But yeah, this is really handy to have and it does cover pretty much everything you need to do to get into it, to get started. Now it doesn't include everything. So if you ever have to replace the mirrors or whatnot, this is not small enough. You'll have to go even smaller. Maybe they'll include a smaller version in the production version. I don't know, but I got this one with only two tips here. Now I'm going to take the camera off of my stand and just, it's gonna be a bit shaky, so stick with me. And we're gonna walk around this thing and take a look at it. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid and show you what the working area looks like. I did a little test with a piece of cardboard and I, I put the cardboard in there and I set the uh, XCS up to laser flat. I put a rectangle in there all the way as far as the extents go and cut a piece of cardboard. Then I put it to laser flat, put the rectangle in there to the extents of it and did it again. So now I can see exactly what my working area is between laser flat and open plane. I think I said open plane. Between laser flat and open plane. I'm gonna grab this camera, zoom in here and show you what that looks like. It's pretty interesting. Okay, so here's what it looks like on the inside. And as you can see, I have a piece of cardboard covering or filling the entire working area of the P2. And I took that and I scored and cut on this cardboard the extents of the open plane and laser flat. All right, so on open plane, you have a nine and three quarter by 19 and five eighths working area. If you can see this dashed line over here, that's how far to the left that the close-up camera can see. And the close-up camera's right here on the side or underneath here, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But that's how far that camera can see. On the right-hand side, how far the camera can see, it can see all the way to this line. But back to open plane, this is your working area. Let me pull this out. 
so you can get an idea. That's what you're working with when it comes to the open plane. So now when it comes to the laser flat area, you have a 12 inch by 23 and a half inch working area. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll take this out. That is your working area that you have with laser flat. Now I can take this out as well. And this shows you the entire bed space. So it has a bigger bed that you can put bigger, more material in here. However, as far as a laser flat goes, that's your working area. That's all you can do. 12 inches by 23 and a half inches. And if you take that even further and you want to go with open plane, that's where your working area is on open plane. Nine and three quarter by 19 and five eighths. Here's the laser head. Let me move it out so you can get a better shot at it. The laser head is basically air assist and the, and the laser itself comes out of this side. Let me pull this off so you can see that. This is just held on by magnets. So right here is the actual laser. And this right here is the drive that actually allows it to go up and down. And the top section up here on the right, that's where the close-up camera is. You see that there's the camera and you can see there's a light around that a light ring around that camera so that's the camera and that's the laser head and inside there you can actually take this off uh, it's kind of hard to do one-handed you can take that off and you can see this is the camera there is the mirror for alignment of the laser the laser is going to come across here hit this mirror come across here hit that mirror and go down that's how that works but yeah that's what it looks like on the inside there the lid itself is held on by magnets it has you know, little magnets on the side so this is really easy to get to when it comes to cleaning and i can take this and put this back on here so really easy to get to when you need to clean it moving that out of the way the overall camera that looks at everything is right here on the top of this if I take this mirror and show that to you, you see that camera in there right there. So that's what the two cameras look like. So here's what the inside looks like. Now, again, when it comes to the knives, the knives you can take out and remove and space them out any way you feel. On the back side where the knives push against this wall, there's a piece of rubber that sort of pushes against the knife and pushing it this way. So to put the knife in and out, what I found is easier is if you push this knife against this rubber first, put it in there and push this way, and then it just drops in place on the front down here. And to remove it, you're gonna, when you pick it up, push that way against that rubber, and it kind of makes it a little bit looser over here, and it just comes out just like that. And when it comes to the knives, you can put them as far apart as you want, or you can completely remove them. But however, the closest you can put them is a half inch in between each knife. So keep that in mind. A half inch is the closest you can put these knives. If you'll notice in here, I have some tape in here. That's why I was trying to figure out where the extents were as far as what I can see with the camera, what I can't. That tape is in there for, to help me kind of figure this thing out as I was testing it. it. I think it would be nice if it had some actually markings in here to tell you exactly where the limits are on this. Maybe on the wall, since you don't really want it on the tray underneath it would be nice to have that on the wall maybe they have it in production i'm not sure so before we continue with this tour let me ask make sure you like this video and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you get all the latest updates about this p2 and about the use of the p2 also in the description of all my p2 videos you'll find a link to a google sheet inside this google sheet you're going to find all the settings I use when it comes to cutting material, engraving material. Um, you can find you know, social media uh, links to, to my account. Also, you can find uh, some additional information like how much power does this use? How loud is it? Uh, what does a test grid look like for this material? As I find that information, as I uh, test all this out, I'm going to put that in the P2 because it's really, for me, but I'm sharing it with all of you as you start using the P2s and you start getting it um, in your home and want to get started, you can use that document to get started right away. So sorry to interrupt, let's get back to it. 
So looking at the front of the unit, you'll see a circle right here. That circle has the locking mechanism. There's an actuator back there. Whenever you start up the unit, the pin pops out and it catches a hole that's on the back side of this lid and prevents you from lifting the lid when it's in operation. Another thing you see is this little horseshoe shaped piece of plastic. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'll pull this out like that. That is there just to access the mirror. So when you need to change the mirrors or adjust the mirrors, if you slide this forward all the way, it gives you the ability to access that mirror and make the adjustments or remove it if you need to. That's what this is for. The exhaust of the P2 is back here on the back. They have two sets of vents, but they both go out the same spot back there, but that's where it pulls the air out of this chamber and into the exhaust hose. Of course, you have your hydraulic hinges. Those are really nice and smooth. And down here on the bottom right, this is where your RA2 Pro is going to attach. This is the same connection that the M1 has. So if you have an M1 cable already with your RA2 Pro, you don't need another cable. However, if you have a different cable, you'll need to reach out to the X tool because they can give you a different cable that will work with your RA2 Pro. All right, so let's close this and take a look at the outside. Over here on the left-hand side, you have a motherboard back behind here, I believe, and there's a lot of cooling needed around that. So that's what these vents are here for. You have a RJ45, your network jack, and your USB-C connection. That is on the front left of the machine. You have to be careful not to, you know, hit that. So be careful with that. Over here on the right-hand side, you have another vent to let fresh air in. I know on the inside over here, you have the air assist pump. I can hear it when it's running, so it's somewhere on this side. You have an emergency button to engage the emergency button. If you have a problem, you just press the button. And to reset it, you just turn this and it'll come back out like that. And it actually comes out. Let me show you again. Push in, and if you rotate it, it comes back out. And on the back side, you have power switch, power cord. Nice thing about this power cord, it's a standard power cord. You don't need a special power brick on there. In fact, this is a, believe, a 20 foot power cord because I don't have a plug near this one. Over here, you have a connection for the fire safety set. You have the, the electronic connection here and the gas connection here. You have some vents in the back. One of the screws is in the vent to, to take this back piece off, so don't forget that one. And then on this side, you have the actual exhaust hose. This is a standard three inch exhaust hose, like what they use on the M1. In fact, this is my M1 hose that I'm using. And to take this off, you just squeeze these and slides off. And that's what it looks like in the inside. And to put it back on, you're just gonna squeeze these and slide it back on. One of the things you're gonna need to do when you first get your P2 is you're gonna need to remove this entire back cover. And this cover consists of screws on the back side, and I believe there's five screws on the back, including one in the middle of this grate right here, and then some additional screws on the inside. Let me show you what those screws look like on the inside. All right, this is what the screws look like on the inside. It's not these screws that you see it's going to be these screws way up underneath there and there are one two three four five six so there's six screws on the inside five screws on the back side and they start way over here at this corner don't touch the hinge screws and keep on going all the way across it's not these it's these above them so once you remove the six screws on the inside of this piece and the five screws on the back side of this you're ready to take this piece of plastic off. Now this is a little tricky to get off, but you want to pull from the outside here first and work your way all the way across. If you pull from both sides, it's a little bit easier. Now we need to take this and pull it straight up. At first I thought it was gonna break it because it does bind right here in the middle. However, all you have to do is just slowly kind of work your way and pull this up. Let me show you. Just kind of wiggle it and it comes off. And the reason why it's actually hard to come off is you see these little tabs right here where those screws go through. Those tabs are fitting tight inside these slots here. 
so it's hard to pull it straight up because you're actually pulling from way over here on the sides. But that's all it is. You're not really going to break anything. Um, you just kind of pull it straight up, pulling those slots, or I'm sorry, pulling these tabs out of those slots. So once you get the lid off, this is what you're going to see on the back. You're going to see the actual tube itself and you're going to see a reservoir reservoir over here on the right. This reservoir is going to hold distilled water and antifreeze. So if you check your manual, your manual is going to tell you to check your average temperatures in your area and that'll tell you how much antifreeze to add in addition to the distilled water. It's really easy to do. You'll take the lid off. They give you a funnel, throw that in there and you're going to measure the amount of liquid uh, and put that in there. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. I appreciate you guys watching. One more thing I want to mention, inside that Google Sheet, there's a place, a link where you can actually fill out a form and ask me questions. If you ask a question that I can actually answer on the air, so to speak, in a video, I'll be sure to do that. So I haven't done that before in the M1 videos. Let's see if it works in these P2 videos. Um, that's it for now. Today's Good Friday. We got Easter eggs to color and celebrations to, to kick off. So. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.